Hello, everybody, and welcome to Coming Up Next here on the Schmodown Entertainment Network. My name is Brad Gilmore. You might know me by another name. You might know me as... Oh, my God, you're my dreamboat, for sure. I kind of like that with this little R&B feel, and I'm always joined <laughs> on the last day of 2020 by Miss Jennifer Sturger. Jen, how you doing? So long. Farewell to this insane year that we have had. Brad, I thought about dressing up because it's our end of the year special, but then I was like... 2020 does not deserve my best clothes, honestly. Plus, it's laundry day, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, out. no, I hear you. I hear you. I just had to pay a $70 dry cleaning bill, and I'm not going to break out any of those shirts to sit inside the house right now. Uh, that's why I'm going to go with the flannel. You know what I mean? The flannel on NYE, yeah. always a good look. Do you have any uh, New Year's Eve traditions that you do, Jen? Is there anything special that you typically would do in a non-pandemic 2020 alternate timeline crap storm? Not really, honestly. Like all my traditions are, are usually centered around Christmas, you know, and the mm. Christmas holiday. I I actually left a note the other day in the uh, Schmodown Facebook group. I don't know if you saw it because there's been all this talk, you know, about, about uh, you know, who's going to get heel of the year, who's going to get manager of the mm. year, blah, 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 blah. And there was a lot of debate going on around who was going to be the heel of the year. And I said, I don't know if it's heel of the year necessarily, but heel of a lifetime to me will always be Shannon Barney because of something that she did at one of my Christmas parties that I had. So can I tell this story really quick? Yes, absolutely. So two years ago, Christmas Eve, we were doing this white elephant gift exchange where everybody brings like a crappy gift that like no one wants. You don't even have to buy it. It could be something that you have laying around your house that you just want to get rid of. That's like super stupid. Like the the more stupid, the better, because there's some good gifts. There's some crappy gifts. So it's all mixed together. You don't know what it is. It's part of the game. But anyways, there's kind of an unspoken rule that if there's a child playing, don't steal from the child. Like, I just think all of the adults kind of looked at each other and we were all like, all right, if Grayson gets something and he's really excited about it, Grayson's four, by the way, we're not going to steal from Grayson because like he's not old enough to understand the concept of the game is to steal from each other and to see who gets left with the crappy gift. So anyways, I open my, like my gift that I pick out and it ends up being this terrible poop game from like Target or Walmart that like you plunge the toilet and poop comes flying out of it and you have to catch the poop before it falls and hits the ground. You know, something that I really would find useful. Right. Anyways, so I digress. I was very disappointed that that is what I ended up picking up out of the, uh, the, the batch of presents. So Grayson's up next behind me and Grayson opens up his gift and it ends up being a Charlie Brown Christmas tree decoration. So it's like the actual little Christmas tree with like a little blanket wrapped around it, you know? And he's super excited that he gets his own Christmas tree. Doesn't get the reference, but he thinks that's adorable. And he's just excited that he got to open a present that he thought was his until Shannon comes up right after him. And you know, Shannon and Mike love Christmas. So the minute they saw Grayson open this little Christmas tree decoration, they were like, we have to get that. And I'm like, you can't, we all looked around the room like, you can't steal from him, Shannon. Like you're not gonna steal from a four-year-old. Sure enough, Shannon gets up, walks across the room and yanks the Christmas tree out of Grayson's four-year-old little hands. And he just goes from like smiling happy to full-blown tears in like a hot second. And like, we're all just sitting there like, oh my God, do we, do we laugh? Are we mortified? Like there's a collective gasp in the room like, oh no, she did not. So she walks across the room with Grayson's gift. Grayson is in full tears. And then he, uh, he walks over to me and he's like, no, no, I'm like, Grayson, you get to steal from us now. Do what do you want to steal? And I'm thinking, take the poop game, obviously. Sure enough, <laughs> he, gra he grabs the poop game from me, opens it up. And then the rest of the night, he's walking around with a fake turd in his hands. So. <laughs> You know, um, all because of the great or the, really the ungrate. Everybody got mad at Shannon for breaking up the wild berries. I've seen her steal a Christmas present from a four year old child. <laughs> That's vicious. That's hardcore. <laughs> that really is. That really I mean, is. It was no holds barred. And I'm like, that alone should win Shannon heel of the year for the rest of her uh, her reign in the Shmona. Wow. Wow. That is ter that is a terrible human being thing to do. Shannon, you should be ashamed of yourself. Why would you do that? Man, that's, that's why but I don't was, like white elephant. Brad, it was one of those moments in life where I'm like, I don't know whether to laugh or to be upset, but I'm just going to cover my mouth because I can't help that I'm like <laughs> smiling that he's having a full meltdown because you don't want a kid to see that you think their meltdown is funny. Uh, right. 
Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, hey, that's part of the holidays, right? Sometimes you just, you got to get, you got to get fake crap thrown in your face <laughs> by Shannon Varney in order to know where your place is in the world, little Grayson. Um, but, but let's, let's talk though about 2020 and let's talk about it in, in a, in somewhat of a positive regard, Jen Sturger, as much as I'll we cry. possibly can. I'll yeah, because best. not only was it a terrible year, but the Schmodown saw some of its greatest moments of all time in a season that was heavily altered. I mean, we were right there in the midst of everything. I remember the last live event, February the 29th, in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, Dan Murrow versus Ben Bateman. It was there. We the people were electric. We were getting on the plane there at uh at at, at the airport there in Atlanta, which name escapes me. Um Hartsfield, Hartsfield Jackson. Whichever it is, we were there in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, really, it's like the Delta Airport is really yeah. what it is. And uh, deliver everyone's luggage to Atlanta is what I found out Delta stands for. But um, anyway, I, that's neither here nor there. We were all there. The energy was phonetic. Everybody was off the charts. And then literally, it was a few days after I returned great to, to the great city of Houston, Texas, after that event that the world shut down. So the Schmodown itself had to shift. We had some matches in the can, but then we had to shift into a digital atmosphere. And Jen, I don't know about you, but this was some of the best play in the history of the movie trivia showdown. You can say for whatever reasons that might be, people are comfortable at home. Maybe some were cheating. I don't know. But there some were whatever were pants. Some most weren't wearing pants. You know what I mean? I got a lot of uh, interesting photos sent to my phone. But uh, mo most were not wearing pants during it. PLD chief amongst them, and um, there were all kinds of different reasons. But Jen. The we found out what PLD stands for. Yeah, we did. <laughs> it like finally came out. <laughs> Your secrets out. PL. Pretty little. Okay. Um, oh, wow. So messed up. <laughs> I was going the other way. <laughs> Anyways, continue. Um. Anyway, Jim, a lot of great moments. I feel like we should should talk about some of the great moments from 2020 in terms of the movie trivia Shimoda. And I would be remiss if we didn't start with what some people I heard, Janine the Machine was one of them, are saying was the match of the year. And this is the one I want to throw off you because you were familiar, very familiar, as as was I, with one of these competitors. Another one had a had a name outside of the world of the movie trivia Schmodown. It was in the movie scape in general. The other one legend in the game of professional wrestling, a rock star, a podcaster, an author, all combined into one. I'm talking about Le Champion Chris Jericho versus Kevin Goodenough Smith. This was one of my top moments of this year, Jen, just because this was a long rumored match. I remember when Chris Jericho was on the old Collider Live show. He said, I want to play in the Schmodown and I want to play Kevin Smith. And it was just a pipe dream. But then free agency happened. Roxy, she drafts Chris Jericho. Coy Jandrew drafts Kevin Smith. And then we finally saw the clash that you know, was. Whether or not we would actually see these guys, let alone go head to head, because like you said, it was a rumor for so long, but also because their schedules are so busy. But I think yeah. honestly, 2020 just became one of those occurrences where it was like everything in the stars just sort of aligned and made it possible that we were able to get this match finally in the books. Would it have been better with a live crowd? Obviously. I mean, why, who, I mean, that's what I think. I think a rematch would eventually be amazing if we can get this done in front of people, in front of an audience. But for just the way everything was handled with this match, I think hats off to Chris Jericho. I don't think a lot of us really thought he had a lot of trivia knowledge and he came in just really played lights out until the very end. Oh, yeah. I mean, it went into to overtime. And I think that this match would have been incredible in front of a live crowd. However, I think that this match would not have happened if it wasn't for the digital season. For Absolutely. Chris being able to be at home. To, like get on a plane and go wherever the match was going to be. That was going to be such a hassle with both their schedules. So it's almost like the digital platform allowed us to stretch ourselves and to get people involved in the Schmodown and get more faces involved in the Schmodown that you might not have seen if we were doing everything in studio. Yeah, I think that you're 100% you're right there. That's why it was one of my uh, moments of the year in 2020. What is one how that stands great was it? And how great was it that the thing that pushed us to sudden death was was Kevin Smith missing a Bruce Willis question? You know like what? I, also, I honestly have to put his appearance on SEN Live up there as one of the great Schmodown moments of the year. Him telling those stories about Bruce Willis was phenomenal. Just phenomenal stuff. And you know what? I like that movie Cop Out. I don't know about you. I, I, just, I just think it was terrible. 
No, I thought it was really, I watched it, I don't know, maybe, maybe even this year, and I was like, this is actually a pretty funny movie. So that was one of my top moments of the year. What about you, Jim? What is one that sticks out to you? Oh, I have to think about it. I, I think I really enjoyed Founding Fathers versus Corruption. I think it's it's one of the matches that'll go down potentially as match of the year. Um, I think any time that these two, you know, factions can lock horns, it's going to be something spectacular. And this match was no different. Um, Every single time that these guys have come together, I just feel like I'm on the edge of my seat, you know, and I'm just, wait, who's going to essentially have a brain fart first is, mm-hmm. is what it comes down to most of the time when these two come together. I think it was nice vindication for corruption, especially after what happened to them in Orlando. And um, yeah, I, 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 I really think that this was corruption's year. For as slow of a start as the, the whole faction got off to, everyone was giving Shannon Barney loads of crap uh they really finished incredibly strong and i think that that's something that she can hang her hat on in terms of being new to the league and just being able to step in and learn how to play this game so two questions on that because one was they're both been hotly debated over the last week let me start with the shannon barney of it all a lot has been made the gift stealer the person who steals from little children and has no soul. The wild berry breaker upper. The wild berry breaker upper. Oh, that so should be her name. When we announce her, it should be like the stealer from children. <laughs> the breaker of berries. <laughs> the breaker. <laughs> the breaker of berries. She She's is a berry buster. First um, lady of corruption. <laughs> let me ask you: Is she the manager of the year? As for as in regards to your schmodown award ballot are you voting for shannon barney because the other managers who've been in contention are winston marshall of course who came in second and then roxy strawer who finished with three champions on her roster and they were also the same three people that she decided and elected to draft first so what about what say you uh jen sturger in regards to that is shannon barney the manager of the year or is someone else i look at it this way i look at it in terms of number of belts held I look at it in terms of overall performance in all of the different tournaments we had. And when you just add up all those numbers alone, it really comes down to Shannon and Roxy for me uh, in terms of who ended the season with belts, uh, who, who has the most hardware essentially at the end of the season. And it comes down to the two of them. And while Roxy may have more belts right now, currently being held in her faction, then I have to look at it like, okay, but who won the faction standings? Mm-hmm. Who did the most with what they had in terms of Shannon went out and she found a bunch of people who everyone went, who is that guy? And she turned them in to some of the biggest names that we're talking about during this free agency and off season. So in terms of who's manager of the year, I have to give the edge to Shannon. I truly do. Because at the end of the year, she was able to start off slow and just claw her way all the way up to the top, beating out Roxy. But I, I I see a lot of people bringing this up as far as the Shannon Barney uh, won the faction wars, and I think that that should be taken into account for sure, absolutely. But if you look at historically who gets, say, coach of the year in the NBA, yeah. it doesn't always go to whoever you know won the NBA championship that year. And you have to think about it like this, the – I mean, you. I think you might have to go back to the 2013-14 season when, when uh, Greg Popovich won uh, Coach of the Year and won the title with the Spurs, if I have my math correct. But since then, uh, uh, Mike uh, Budenholzer won for the Hawks, didn't win the title. Steve Kerr won for the Warriors, going 73-9. and Of course, LeBron James put it into that. They didn't win the title. Mike D'Antonio from the Houston Rockets got Coach of the Year. They didn't win the title. Dwayne Casey, Nick Nurse, um, the list goes on and on of people who went out there and won the title. Uh, I think Nick Nurse also won the championship in the same year that he was uh, uh, elected coach of the year. So it doesn't always happen. As you see, it's more so on the other side of things, the person who wins the championship that year, the team, doesn't necessarily mean they have the coach of the year. They have the better players on the roster. I think that the rock stars really um, went out there. They over they overperformed. They over-delivered. Uh, yes, Roxy has three champions. Technically, it's a, it's the team's title, so it's two champions. But nevertheless, they're all got a belt around their waist and not just want to hold up their pants. And I think that when you talk about the play within key matches, Roxy was in half of the spectacular. Let's not forget that. She was in half of the spectacular. 
The first three matches all had a Roxy Stryer rock star. That says something, too. So uh, she, to me, Roxy Stryer has it. I understand the Shannon Barney argument, but that's just my only counter to that. But anyway. We'll see. We'll see. Other question. Founding fathers. Were they a success or failure? Frank Janis tends to think that the founding fathers were a failure. What say you? I think the founding fathers are just one of those teams that, you know, when like things click and things click and you keep the team together and it's almost like you keep the team together and stuff gets kind of stale. I feel like that's where the founding fathers ended up in terms of they just, they relied too heavily on each other. I think John Roca had an incredible year in terms of his play, but the questions just didn't fall in his favor. Like he played phenomenally this year, despite the fact that he is one of those players that I think genuinely feeds off crowd energy and performs better when he's in front of a crowd. I don't know why that is. I would be the complete opposite. I'd be like, no, no, give me my pajamas and playing at home any day of the week. But he feeds off that crowd energy. Whereas um, I think Dan Merle, look, it's Dan Merle. He's the best in the game for a reason. Yeah. You know, um, despite the outcome at Spectacular, that's not changing his status in terms of where he's going to end up on the Mount, Schmo- uh, Mount of Schmoes, you know, or whatever we're calling it. Mount Schmolympus? Mount Rushmo? Rushmo is just hard for me to say. Do you know that? Like when I was a kid, I couldn't say Sinatra. There's nothing in the world that could have gotten me to say the name Sinatra. Like, I say it's Sinatra. Frank Sriracha. And you're like, they're like, no, 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 no. Frank no. Sriracha is actually, oh my God, that is a great Twitter handle name. Frank <laughs> Sriracha. Oh, thank you, Jen. Boom. I'm going to start calling myself that. Frank but, Sin- Sriracha. You know, I, just think, I just think that the Founding Father's time has kind of come to see what's out there, to have a mm-hmm. conscious uncoupling. I don't think it had to go down the way it did. No. Uh, I think that they could have just. Like I said, conscious uncoupling, like they Gwyneth Paltrow themselves and just be like, you know what? We still care about each other a lot, but we're just, you know, ready to play with other people. Well, vagina candles aside, we will see what is the future of... uh... I was going to say, and someone can, you know, start a candle line or something, you know, whatever. Let me... (laughs) Whose candle would you rather have, John or Dan's? I don't know if that's appropriate. I don't know if it's appropriate at all, Brad. How about that? You know what, Brad? You're just trying to get us canceled. You really are. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. That I couldn't help myself. Um, Hey, Cinderella stories happened this year in the movie Trivia Smoke. We saw a lot of people rise to the top of the ranks, and I think that none was more uh, fitting of that title of a Cinderella than Ace Cabrera. Ace Cabrera came back to the movie Trudy Smodown after a long time away, Jennifer Sturger, and then when he walked in the door, they said, hey, how about you play Robert Parker and interview them? And he said, sure. And then what happened? He got embarrassed. As Booker T would say, he got molly whopped. You know what I mean? He got <laughs> embarrassed to the nth degree. Then he came back in the same season, entered the Star Wars tournament as a play-in competitor against a man named Josh Covado, who I had never heard of, but given how Aces, Ace Cabrera's performance was in Ergeetum, I said, Josh Covado's got it. And then- I think everyone, I think everyone was in the same boat with you when that when that happened, Brad. I same was, boat, I no was pun intended. Really there, but I really enjoyed watching Ace's run. I think that by the end of it, he literally had everyone rooting for him. Obviously we thought he was, we, he was going to have a great, shot at facing Alex Damon but I think what it came down to is he had so much momentum going for him that when he finally got to Damon he had been on ice for a hot minute you know and it's like there was that sparkle that just you know like you don't want to stop that run that's why I always when I look at teams that are that are successful in terms of like the NFL playoffs and stuff like that sometimes having a bye week is great in terms of being able to rest but sometimes it can punish you in that you're not as game ready, you're not as warmed up, you know, for ready ready for play. And I think that that's honestly what came down to. I think I would love to see Ace get another shot at it at some point, and I think that we will. Uh, I think that these two are not done dancing with one another. Oh, I like dancing. I mean, are we talking like a, a waltz? I mean, are we in a three, four pattern? Are we a tango? I know it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I think it's more of a tango or a foxtrot, you know? Foxtrot, like it, <laughs> like it. Big fan of the foxtrot. Um, yeah, I think that Ace, Ace Cabrera had an incredible season and, you know, obviously he didn't beat Alex Damon, obviously. 
you know, like you said, but I think Alex Damon's time is coming. I think his time is coming. And I, and I, I I'm sure that Alex Damon probably despises me. Because I'm always you saying think his something. Days are numbered. How often do you say this? I say this all the time, and I don't know why. And here's the thing: if people but, also are like, "Is he? But, in, is he in the?" After me, haters gonna hate. I'm not a hater. I'm a big fan of Alex Damon. I met Alex Damon's family, I believe, in Atlanta. Beautiful people. Uh, big fan of Molly Damon. Big fan of a certain point of view. Another podcast out there in the Schmodown universe uh, that Molly Damon's on. Love it all. I don't know why I always find myself rooting against him. Maybe it's because he's so good. Maybe that's the thing. And although I, I always appreciate a winner. That's why I always say anybody who hates on Alex Rodriguez same, is an idiot. I think I had the same feeling towards like Ronda Rousey in her heyday where I'm like, I just want to see someone knock her down a peg. She could come back right after that. But like, I just want to see it happen once. You know, yeah. I want to see that they're invincible and I want to root for that underdog. I'm a huge fan of the underdog. And, exactly. and I feel like you could be on to something in terms of eventually someone's going to catch Alex Damon resting on his laurels, or he's going to get so busy with work and other things that he's not going to have the attention to put into Star Wars the way that he currently does. I just think it'll happen eventually. And it may only happen once and he may get it right back. But someone, someday, with this it's new crop of, of players coming up, the Dragon right. Con Star Wars players we're hearing about. I mean, I think I, I think I think it's gonna happen. But I want to say, big Alex Damon fan. I'm a big big Alex Damon fan. For some reason, I'm oh, always rooting you against you. Almost say it like it's true. It is true. It is. True. I I I got love for the man. For some reason, I'm always rooting against him. I don't know why. I don't know why. Um. Now, I think that the biggest storyline. Um. There's there's two that kind of are interweaving with one another. Um. One one of the biggest ones was not only the establishment of the factions, which when I was told this idea over the phone by a man named Christian Harlov, I thought to myself, this is a really cool idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's going to work, right? I just don't know if it's going to work in practicality. How are you going to do teams when it's like an individual sport? I mean, what if teams play one another? I don't understand. I didn't understand it, but I'm not a, uh, a futurist, I guess. I just, I have to see something work before I can believe it, I guess. And um, I, it turned that's out how to most be men's brains work, to be honest. So. That's how most men's brains work. Okay, thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Thank you for the slight dig here. Um, <laughs> but I, but I loved it. And then when we saw at the draft and the awards show, which you and I both attended at the legendary comedy store almost a year ago now, if it, if you can yeah. even believe that, it's almost a year ago. It feels um, like yesterday. It really does. It feels uh, not too long ago which would be yesterday uh, <laughs> to go along with what you just said. But when we were there that night, there was an obvious front runner coming out of that night. And it was the legendary Finstock exchange, right? Mm -hmm. You're coming in with Ben Bateman, who is the singles champion. You have Dan Merle and John Roca, who are the team's champions. And then you have Mark Riley as a part of uh, who's the boss. That it was just your first felt four. like a team that was a team of destiny that you were just like, it's not even fair. It's not even fair to all the other fashions trying to keep up because you look at it and you're like, they're just so stacked. But yes. as we've come to see in sports, just because you happen to have a lot of the best players out there, it doesn't mean that those players are going to gel together. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean they're going to perform well together because there's something that like, there's something to be said about having so much success that you're like, I don't need to study. I don't need to work on this. I just show up with whatever I have. And you cannot do that in this day and age with the type of players that are coming up right now. You just can't. And it's, that's why it's hard, think, that's it's why hard to wake up and, the, oh, go ahead. I'm no, sorry. that's why I think you saw a, a huge downfall of the horsemen this year is because you have a lot of that old school in there, a lot of that old school swag in there. And those are the guys that are, I think are going to have to sit back and really reassess how they play this game going forward. Yeah, they say um, it's hard to wake up and train when you're sleeping in silk pajamas. And I think that uh, Gucci, who actually sleeps with no shirt on, I can tell you that for a verified fact, having to I don't share. Know how you know that. I had to share a room with him in Atlanta. It's an experience that I will never forget, although I would like to. Um, <laughs> there were things. There were things that happened, Chad. Things. What happened? Well, that's what you looked like. You just looked scarred. <laughs> Guys, something I want to say right now, but I forget we're on a 
on his show. Um, well, on his show. But they were the clear front runners in this in this uh, in this game, Jen Sturger. But they definitely fell. So to me, uh, what did you think overall of factions being introduced? And then what did you think of the glorious flaming out of the four horsemen as we were knowing them? Now the Finstock Exchange, the complete deterioration of that entire group. You had when Ben Bateman lost to Dan Merle the second time. Boom, he and Finstock had beef. It was obvious that Ben Bateman was on the move. And then Dan Merle, John Rocco, you were there. You got a front row uh, view of what happened between the two of them. Just And then Mark Riley is, I don't know where Mark Riley is. He's doing something, I'm sure, but he hasn't really been as active and as at the top tier of the uh, competition as he's been in years prior. A complete flame out of what was the team who were, should have ended with all the belts, all the records, and all the points. But when I look at what the factions did, one thing that I think it accomplished is I think it accomplished this sense of, of unity and this sense of team. I don't think that that's something that the Schmodown has really had before in terms of players helping one another prepare players. We all rooted, we all rooted for each other. You know what I mean? Like we would all support each other, but like this created a sense of like, they're my person. They're my yeah. teammate. I have to lift them up and help them prepare with the knowledge that I bring to the table. So then it becomes a whole different part of the strategy where it's like, oh, I've played that person before. Let me tell you their weaknesses. Or I've, I, this was my experience with that person when I played against them and that type of stuff. And so I think it just became part of the gamesmanship and something that like going forward is going to be a part of strategy. And when you start thinking about players who may end up on a different faction, the knowledge they're going to take about their other faction from that faction to the new faction. I hope that made sense. Um, it's going to get a little tricky because they're going to have the experience with their previous faction and take it over and say, Hey, look, this is how the inner workings work. So teams are going to have to be on their toes when it comes to players ending up on different factions this year. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> the, uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the free agency special that's coming up and the draft is going to be my favorite part of the year. Like it was last year. This is going to be my favorite part of the year. I love um, Sack Rider and the gang breaking down all the ins and outs of the uh, movie trivia showdown as it goes, PLD, what is wrong with you? I see PLD on my screen and he's making faces at me that is not okay. Speaking of, um, I will be filling in for, for Ben Bateman uh, this week on the on Schmodown backstage. Uh, so you it's can like it's like looking in a mirror. It really is. I'm sorry, guys. I have the giggles today. I don't know why. Um, yeah, you, you have can a check little me. something on your face. Uh, what? Come again? You have a little something on your face. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but we will be uh where were we? I'm sorry. Yes, the factions were all great. One more thing I want to talk about, <laughs> Jen Sturger. Um and trust me, if anybody knows, it's Brad. I knows. I knows things. Um, Jen Sturger, let's talk about and I I did this to pop PLD and it worked. And it hundred percent worked. <laughs> I'm, I'm so trying glad to break you him to an audience of one, Brad. Hey man, hey man, I gotta play the hits where I know I can get some laughs. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, gotta, I, I play the short game, you know what I mean? Um Andrew Guy and the Shmominati was another storyline that entertained us throughout the entirety of the year. First, we saw it on a weird episode of Schmodown Backstage, which is why I brought up Ben Bateman, uh, David Sackwright, who had a really great episode this week. Go check that out with Mara Kanopic on there, giving a lot of details where she might end up, maybe her and Dan aren't on the same team. We will see, as well as great other players, so go check out that episode. But um, Andrew Guy and Ben Bateman had that match where Andrew Guy was completely bonkers and out of his mind. Uh, looked like he had grease in his hair or something like that. He was sweating profusely, looking off to the side, and then he says that he figured it out. And the final thing that we saw from the Schmodown this season was him being abducted. What do you think of this moment of the year? Uh, I am concerned, quite frankly. Uh, I haven't really heard a lot from Andrew Guy since then. Um, I just get like random smiley face text messages back every now and then when I ask if he's okay. And I'm like, that's not really an answer. Um, yeah, I think all along, I never doubted Guy was on to something, but there was also part of me that was like, he's just blowing this out of proportion or, you know, that, that loss in Houston last year really rocked him. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm now I'm looking at it going, huh. Maybe he's on to something, you know? 
maybe he is. Uh, I, for one, am very curious who the person behind the mask was. And um, I don't know. I just, maybe he can, I'm like, maybe HR should like be looking into this. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Skybound. Don't you have like a human resources thing that yeah, we could uh, maybe get like an investigation? Is definitely something we should look into. You know, when I was a kid and I used to watch stuff on uh, WWE, especially back in the Attitude Era, when, you know, they'd set people on fire or they'd electrocute another man's genitalia or they'd abduct the boss's daughter and put her on a large Undertaker symbol. I used to think, where are the cops? You know? <laughs> where are the cops? Yeah, <laughs> like, be inter- I know there's someone at the building. Where are the cops? Like, there's security everywhere. Like, <laughs> is no one going to, someone stop this man? You know, like. You know what's a Saturday Night Live skit that's never happened is like, because uh, every time I see a security guy at a concert, back when we used to go to those things, you know, they have to stand with their arms crossed and their back to whatever is going on, mm-hmm. right? I feel like that's a Saturday Night Live skit somewhere, like the greatest concert in the world's going on. And you're like, and oh, this- man, that's awesome. And he's and like, you have to look the it. other way. Drive it to me. <laughs> oh man anyway anyway those are some of the great moments those are some of the great moments of 2020 here on new year's eve december the 31st we are counting down the hours to 2021 uh and hopefully 2020 did not win if you understand what i'm saying but jim i think that with that we are going to have a a round of gucci isms coming up so and we're going to have a special guest joining us for those gucci isms so pld will if you will alert our guests that we are ready for them um, we do have an announcement that we must make. This is the last show of 2020 for us here on Coming Up Next. And unfortunately, it is our last show ever. Um, Jen Sturger and I will not be doing Coming Up Next on a weekly basis. Going into Season 8, the Schmodown has a lot of things going on, including a ton more matches, a tons more coverage, tons more everything. And uh, Coming Up Next really just didn't fit in the format as it stands right now, that might change down the road, but as it stands now, we will not be here on a weekly basis. However, Jen will be doing a lot of things in the Schmodown. I will still be doing the Schmodown Rundown with Frank Janish. And who knows? And who knows? Maybe we'll get the band back together at some point for some special occasions. You never know. You never, you know. Ne- you, ne- you never know what's going to happen, but um, but we really did enjoy working on this show together. This was the first time, Jim, you and I had done this. We started doing these little preview specials, and then yeah. we had the call to do coming up next. And I really enjoyed uh, getting to do this show for, our, for a short run, but we had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was fun. It was silly. And honestly, like we had RV3 with us for a hot minute. And now we've been just blessed with having PLD with us and, and how much he's added to the show and... Honestly, guys, I don't know how I would have gotten it if I didn't have appointments in terms of like having this show to add structure to my life in 2020. Just one day a week, I was guaranteed to put on makeup and hang out with my friends for like an hour, hour and a half, depending on how long we felt like going for the day. Um, But it's been an honor. And honestly, like I, I just working with you, Brad, has been such a blast. You're the little brother that I never wanted. Um, but I am just so grateful that I've gotten to know you and your sense of humor. Um, I am so less threatened by you and more um, just completely charmed with the smart ass that you are. And I really hope that we get to work together more in the future. Yeah, Jin, uh, sa- same goes to you. I mean, obviously, when you come into the Schmodown universe, you're like, oh, yeah, I think I think Andrew Guy and Ben Bateman have said it before. It's like, oh, man, there's Jen Sturger. Okay, I mean, this is a real <laughs> pro here. Okay, this is a real pro. And then I find out that you're just as silly and ridiculous as I am and the rest of the sh- crew is yeah, at the movie review Schmodown. Uh, you might be the most silly and ridiculous one of the entire bunch um, with the most inappropriate jokes I've ever heard in my life. So we really do, app- uh, I really have appreciated the time getting to know you as well, working with you. And I'm sure this isn't the last time you will see us simultaneously on your Schmodown screen and PLD. Come on, my man. This is the guy. This is the guy. Whenever we were putting this show together, Jen and I said, we need somebody who can really be the showrunner, who can really f- help us format this thing, have we a need vision a grown for grown up it. in charge. That's what we said. <laughs> we, really, we needed an adult. We I've never been accused adult. of that before, but okay. <laughs> we needed an adult, and we turned to Action Industry Zone. Paul Denuzio, who's been a longtime fan of the movie Trivia Schmodown and, and one of the uh, biggest voices in the community, 
And we wanted to turn to him because he gives the people what they want. Can you see that mustache? I don't think you can, but I can see it. Free rides. Oh, yes. But uh, <laughs> PLD, thank well, you, thank my God man. thank God this is our last show. Like I said, you've done your best trying to get us canceled today. I don't know why I have the giggles today. I don't know what's going on. But PLD, no, I really, truly appreciate you joining the show. And then when RV3 left, having to learn how to produce literally in a week, uh, so we appreciate you, PLD. Would you like to say and anything? And all that technology because, let's face it, Brad and I are pretty, but we're not good with really <laughs> anything else. So, <laughs> Well, I'm used to that with, uh, with Bateman. He is the uh, same type of situation. He can't uh, do technology either. But I want to thank you guys very much for bringing me on board. It's been a lot of fun getting to be involved. You guys are a great team. You guys are hilarious. You're fun, funny. Uh, I couldn't ask for anybody to be, uh, to work with any better. Um, and thanks for the opportunity. Thanks to the fans and everything else, of course. And, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll uh, see each other again soon at some point. Hopefully we do get the band back together sometime in 2021, maybe for big specials or something like that. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll figure it out. But we thought, what better way to close out the year? What better way to close him out, to close it out, 2020? than doing, I think, the fans' favorite segment on this show. And we had a lot of, of fun things that we did. By the way, really loved, uh, uh, you know, which, uh, do you know the odd couple? What do we call it? Otter, odd otter. Otter, 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 otter. Fun. Um, you know. Oh, oh, remember when we had, we had Bibbs and the kid, basically. Oh, that was hilarious. Jericho. Yeah, doing charades, trying Where to I guess. Like, can Viviani communicate without screaming, without <laughs> making noise? I don't know. Let's find out. Um, also, the Halloween picture one was pretty fun. The Halloween picture was great. That was great. Can you say that, Brad? Can you say that? Shmalloween. Try to say that again. Shmalloween. There we go. Frank Sriracha up in this. Um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed all the games. I really did. And I'm. Uh, uh, who knows the boat better? Of course. Who knows the boat better? Which Jim that you lost? Rigged. That was rigged. That you was lost. Rigged. That was rigged. I'm sorry. And you exhibited <laughs> loser behavior with that one. Oh, but come on. And that is why Frank the Slug. It was full Frank the Frank Slug. Frank the Slug. Frank the Slug was a fun one. Uh, we're just reminiscing uh, on the show short run. We had a lot of fun here. A lot of great guests who joined us. Our first guest was Jeff Snyder, who I, I expect big things from at the Schmodown Awards. But the original game that we had, that I think was the best game that we ever played in the entirety and the history of this show was a little segment that we like to call Gucci-isms. We all love Tom Dagnino. Well, some of us do. Some of us tolerate him. <laughs> but he says some crazy things sometimes. And we thought it'd be a really fun way to um, to end this year by playing Gucci-isms, Jen. And, and, and to me, you never know what really he was going to say and what he wasn't going to say. And you don't know if he really did say that or if he didn't say that or it kind of sounded like he said that, but he didn't. You know what no, I'm saying? No, of course. Of course. There's, and there's, and look, I don't know that Tom would even know the things that he says versus like ancient philosophers. Well, Pretty speaking of. Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> making everybody, you know, making America Gucci again. That's all I do here, you know? Well, there he is. The man who the segment is named I after. I didn't red hats could get any sadder, but here we are. Mm -hmm. Well, I made I made the you know the executive decision of getting it in red. You know, uh, <laughs> it's uh yeah, it's something. It's something. It's you definitely something. something. It's That's what something. we do here. Everybody, you, you know, <laughs> people forget about Gucci. You know what I mean? So listen, no one forgets about Gucci. Let's be clear. Yeah. Uh, but. We, we when we approached you about this game and we were like, hey, we're going to play this game. I, do you think it's funny? Are you insulted by it? You're like, oh, no, it's genius. And it then is. you watch the first clip of it. You were like, Jen, I got to be honest. I thought I said all of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought I really did. I mean, sometimes, you know, it spews out of my mouth is, you know, I don't know sometimes, but that's when the brilliance happens. So yeah. when we got word, obviously, that the show was going to be going away, I said, we have to do one last Gucci-isms, but we've got to play it with Gucci. Yeah, so I'm in. We have to I, know I, I if love that. you know what things that you may have or may not have said are. That's There's a really good chance that I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, PLD, do we have the, the quotations? I do. I do have them indeed. Oh, uh, beautiful. You know, 
you know, is uh, extrinsicity, you know, is misdiagnosed as being uh, as nuts as a fruitcake nowadays. Is that on there? Uh, that was a potential alternate I was going to use. <laughs> oh, okay. But, uh, I guess I I'm not know what you just now. said. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, <laughs> we'll have to see how that works. But uh, yeah. I've got a couple of good ones I think you'll you'll appreciate. So, uh, so PLD, are you going to read these? I will read these to you, all and right. we'll go from there. If you guys are all ready, then uh, Let's we do can it. get going then. Yeah, I mean, everybody looks great. Everybody looks like they're having nice holidays, you know. Uh, I think everybody needs to take more victory laps in their life rather than, uh, you know, preparing for the next race to begin. All right. Without further ado, here is the first one. I've been noticing gravity since I was very young. Gucci or not Gucci? That is a good one. I've been noticing gravity since I was... Very young. Well, grammatically, it's off, which yeah. I think is a, a, a tick in the column yeah, is, for Tom. Um, it's a telltale sign, and it's not mine. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've always had – I've never really had issues with gravity. Um, I don't – you know, and, and I rarely talk about gravity, but I'm going to talk about something that's going to be space, you know, not gravity. I won't, cl- I won't, I won't really clarify it. I'm going go to go ahead and say – I'm going to go ahead and say that's not me, yeah. Okay, well, let's let's make the, the let's go for that. You know what? I'm gonna say it is Gucci. I'm actually gonna say that it is Gucci. <laughs> All right. Jeff, it's she not said it was Gucci. Gucci. Not Gucci. Oh, it's not Gucci. Okay. All right, and oh, my name is Cameron Diaz. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. I, I knew that Diaz. wasn't me. I'm not a really gravity. I'm not a gravity guy. You're not oh. a gravity. You're more of a space guy than oh. a gravity guy. See, we're learning everything. We're learning more about you. We're more learning more about you, Gucci. <laughs> so, what's the next one? Okay, the next one we got. Reasonable explanations just don't interest guys like me. That's a great hmm. quote. What uh, do you think, Tom? You know what? Uh, that is that is definitely me. That is <laughs> definitely me because that's the way I operate. If you bore me, I'm out of here. You know, and that's what my life has been about recently. I don't really. Uh, uh, all right, I'm going with Gucci on this. I'm going yeah. with Gucci. I'm riding with Gucci on this. How do you not go with the guy if he says it's him? <laughs> Can you read the quote one more time? I will. One more time. Reasonable explanations just don't interest guys like me. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's Tom Dagnino for sure. That's 100% Tom Dagnino. <laughs> Bottom line, you're a loser. <laughs> yeah. you yes. Okay. okay. Beautiful. We have three Beautiful. more. What's next, PLD? Okay. I'm too busy writing history to read it. Hmm. Wow. You know See, what? I mean, that wow. sounds super intellectual. Um, and I am obviously. Um, <laughs> right. 100%. You know, I w- I'm going to go ahead and say that was me. I believe I said that somewhere in like a drunken Gucci verse or something. I think. I'm about 92% that might be me. Jim? I feel like this is someone else. You think it's someone else? I think yeah. it's Kanye. It sounds very I think Kanye. It's Kanye to me. or like Jay Z. I don't think it's you, Gucci. Well, those guys are my friends, you know. <laughs> All right. Well. I love it. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I did think it sounded very Kanye West to me. Okay. Awesome. We get You're mixed 90- up a lot. And you were 92% sure that that was yourself. That was always an 8% chance that it wasn't. And, That's true. Uh, you know, that is 8% true. 8% chance that it wasn't. All right. Got two more here. Got one. I always knew I was a star. Now the rest of the world agrees with me. Hmm. Mm. Not Gucci. I think, I think it is Gucci. I mean, I've, I had something. I, mean, I, I, I think I've said something similar to that. I don't think he'd call himself a star. I think he'd call mm. himself Yeah, like I don't use the word star. Something. Star feels so generic, you know? Yeah, I just use the word like great, you know, fantastic. I think yeah, those are generic. the bounds <laughs> above everybody else. They're all pretty generic. Uh, or I do have a hat that says make, you know, Mer- make uh, make uh, America Gucci again. So, you know, that's, see, it doesn't, I didn't use the word great. Um, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say uh, that it is not me. Not you. Okay. Jen? Yeah. Not Gucci. I'm going, it is Tom. Okay. All right. When you hear a sound, Freddie Mercury. Oh, Freddie Mercury. Really? Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. I, I, wouldn't have bet, I wouldn't have bet on that one. But you know, I wouldn't, okay. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either, okay. but I like it. 
Okay, is this our last one? Yeah. I have to repurpose that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was that is something I think you could definitely repurpose. Um, I do have one more, one last one. Ten times out of ten, the person you deem the craziest in your life is the most realistic. Ten times out of ten, the person you deem the most craziest in your life is. You know what? what? I believe I believe I've said this somewhere. Uh, I think it was. I think it was involving a guy who told me to invest in Bitcoin like seven years ago. And I was like, this guy is a loony bird, crazy person. But I guess he was legitimately, and he was the craziest person I've ever met. Still is, <laughs> but he was right. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say that was me. <laughs> I think it was Tom. I'm going to go Tom. Well then. Uh... And bottom line. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, <that's not> <laughs> well, Beautiful. Is. Beautifully oh done. God, got the fist pump out of Gucci. Oh. Yeah, this game is definitely something that needs to carry on somewhere. <laughs> Maybe we'll take it up and bring you guys on or something like that. It'd be great. Because I have a zillion quotes that, that are just not read oh, yet. We know. Yeah. We know. Yeah. We're stocked up. We're, just, we're you know, ready to go well into 2021 with this. I've been stalking mm -hmm. Gucci for a while trying to come up with come uh, write down these quotes for the show. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, when you keep your stress levels as low as I do, you have no real other choice to be as magnetic, you know? So that's just the way I operate, you know, they, magnetic. They, you know, he might come, you know, this might come back in some way, shape or form. So, yeah, well, there you go. You know, well, well there it is. Well, Tom, we appreciate you for joining us for our last episode of Coming Up Next. Uh, you got it. You can check him out on the Gucci-verse, of course, and we'll see mm -hmm. what happens with the Finstock Exchange next oh, season. Yeah. I'm sure you're, a lot of things are bubbling, and uh, we'll be in touch soon, my man. Thank you so much. No problem. There's no off-season for Gucci. That's right. Never. Well, go yeah. ahead and make America Gucci again, Tom. We appreciate <laughs> you. Know you know I will. <laughs> we appreciate you for joining. Enjoy the holidays, everybody. Take All care, right, man. Thank you. Take that care. is the legendary yeah, Tom Dagnino, of course. Um, well, Jennifer Sturger, that's a wrap. That's all that we have for you. Uh, this go around here on coming up next, maybe in 2021, you will see us again somewhere, sometime, someplace. You will definitely see Jen, myself, and PLD all in the Schmodown community in one way or another. Jen, let the people know where they can find you and follow you in any parting words. At Jennifer Sturger, guys, on all the socials. And as always, it's just been an absolute pleasure being able to spend a day every week with you guys. Um, I'm going to miss the show. I'm going to miss all of the silliness that we did during the show. But this is not the last of any of us in the Schmodown. And hopefully one day we can get the band back together and play some of these fun games again. Because I really enjoy the stupid parts of this show. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoy the dumb. The dumbness is always my favorite thing in the world. So you can find I it all. I specialize in dumbness. So me too. Me too. Uh, I got a full ride scholarship for it. But you can find me on all social media at Brad Gilmore. Check out the Schmodown Rundown with me and Frankie Boy Janish. Or you can check me out this upcoming Tuesday on Schmodown Backstage, where I'll be filling in for Ben the Boss Bateman. Until then. For Jennifer Sturger and PLD, my name is The Boat, Brad Gilmore. This is coming up next. Have a good 2021, guys. See y'all. Oh.